I'll walk you guys through this. This is a big prostate. This is a 74-year-old gentleman with a 280-gram prostate on MRI. Yeah. So we're going to go in and do this. So I, I use about a whole syringe of lube. Uh, what kind of lube are we using? We are using... No, it didn't, yeah, yeah. This guy, just, uh, just HR just lubricant. Just my personal opinion, I don't know if you said anything, but it's more epigenic. KY is much more epigenic. Okay. So. Excellent, thank you. Oh, man. It doesn't look that big. So you can see it right here. Like that, yeah, oh yeah. and the big median lobe here, and here's bladder. Here's some of, yeah. yeah this is all into the bladder. Yeah, humongous. Bladder neck here. Can we go in a little bit further, you think? Yeah, I'm kind of hubbed it. Maxed out? I can go okay. a little more. What do you think? Good. Right there? Yeah. Perfect. All right, let's hit that in view. Long, big, tall, lengthy breast. Yeah. A lot of stocky. So there's median lobe right there. And then we'll come back. I'm going to center this a little better here. Yeah, probably. What do you say? I would say about six. Yeah. We'll see once we put the hand piece in. Is it hand piece is seven. You just got a trigger on that to move it, the probe? Yeah, I'm going back, back and forth. Side. And this is the trigger stepper trigger here. Gotcha. <laughs> All right, got my lube. Feels nice again. 24 French handpiece here. It's pretty small. Clean up here. Usually it fits in pretty good. We had to dilate the last guy a little bit, but nothing significant. <coughs> Come in here. And then an ultrasound. You can see me kind of creeping in, which is kind of cool. There we go. Excellent. Nice bladder. Get water off here for a sec. So I got the scope in. Look at that, just kind of compress. Come up a little bit. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. See what that does. And then shift everything to the left a little bit more. <coughs> yeah, perfect. That was good. Okay. Upper high as I can get. Right up that interior commissure. That's a massive prostate. Massive. Look at that big all central tissue there. And I'm all the way back, I think. Go all the way back and then just once you're back, pull the hand piece a little to see yeah. how see how much more we can go. Sure. Right there. I think we're good. It's hard to tell. Irrigation's on? Irrigation's on. Okay. Yeah. Let me come back with the ultrasound a little bit and see? Yeah, it's a little bit. Got some room. Okay, yeah, you're right on it. Right Looks on like it. your urethral yeah. cliff here. I think it'll be one pass. I agree. There's my there's my cliff right here for my right. prostate. There's my scope. I'm above the above it. I'm right here. I Good. Like, I'm gonna leave it. Perfect. Is that so, so you have like you're in the bladder? I am in the bladder here. Oh, this is me so, going. So there's into a it. channel that's in the bladder, and the camera's in the. Apron. Correct. Okay, so the channel is Pretty good. Going a little bit with the scope. Yeah, let's see once we clear up. Yeah, and then step again. Yeah, we're right there. I can see it. Perfect. All right. This guy right here. If we want to just visualize what three and nine is, you could bring up your green line to see it shooting off at three and nine. In the jet, correct. But if you visually see it at three and nine, you'd leave it as is. But for this step, you want to put our one marker right in between our water jet and the aspiration. 
So I'm going to move this up. Let me get that yellow line right at the capsule. That's the most outer. Right now you're just moving the dynamics of the water. Too aggressive? Yeah. I think, uh, come down one yeah, right there, perfect. Not moving anything else. Moving the angle the angle. The angle yeah. of the water jet. Everything else is stationary. It's good. I think that's good. Look, yeah. You're going to leave plenty of tissue below. Should we do the media load? I didn't really I see, really some, see yeah. yeah. I think this is more. Yeah, you're perfectly aligned with that urethral cliff, so that's good. Awesome. Big prostate, okay. Yeah, you can see it right there. Right now you're squirting the water jet black. Yeah, just to see where the nozzle comes out. You can do it back to that one. And then here's my depth markers. Let's go outside. And bladder and neck. I think that's bladder and neck there. Mm hmm. I agree. And then I would say mid prostate's probably right here. That's a huge prostate. And that's my end. Perfect. Let's see what it comes up with. He doesn't really care about ejaculation as much. He's a little older. Maybe we could drop down five, then a little bit more. Yeah. Cover some we more can just area. Hit the contour of the prostate. Yeah, perfect. If you did care about ejaculation, would you do something different? Yeah, your... then I would go like this, about halfway through, so then I'm sparing all that ejaculatory tissue. Um, if you didn't really care at all, I'd open it up more, but we'll go somewhere like right there. Perfect. And uh, I'm going to go with that. That was pretty quick setup for a big, big ass plastic. Yeah. yeah, that was great. I'm sorry, you said if you want to preserve a you would stop it at like 20 or 15 Yeah. And you would leave all that behind? For my young guys, you'll see one later today. I'll go just half the prostate. Oh, really? Yeah. Just to make sure you preserve it. Yeah. Okay, cool. And you'll do just one pass. There's some data to sell. One oh, pass is. Pass yeah, less traumatic. So you need to really tease out the degree and not just look up a number. Yeah. Look how awesome that is, how well it's opening up. And what we'll do is we'll turn on irrigation if we can when we get to the end and just so we can visualize it. Well, one tube, I want to see if we need to get any more apical tissue because we could always bring back the, the hand piece on the second pass. Okay. And two, if it contracts, we might be able to get away with pulling it back and having some more room, too. This would... Very yeah. so you're fixed, your probe is fixed, and I'm moving the probe. Correct. But your oh, so yeah, the water jet will go in the probe like this, and it's firing down. Okay, so the water jet has the ability to move down this way. Yes. Right. And the camera's part, and that's why the view is changing. Because so, you can't fire any of these things. That's what I did. I just, you know, yeah, I usually assume that the jet came out of the tip of the probe, and it doesn't. You guys all look at it. It moves. It's all standalone. Yeah. Because you have the, the three the three hypercoke shadows. So it's going to be the aspiration is the top one, the jet is the bottom one, and it's tracking right here with the dot. Yeah. And then the scope is parked. What is uh, the aspiration? Is this a drainage channel you're saying? So as we're introducing the fluid and cutting, an we're aspirating. So correct. A separate movement for that. And that's in the black. And it's yeah, correct. You can see it's coming out right here. And, and yeah. So that's the top one. That's and that's aspiration. aspiration. That's the water jet. That's your camera. You got it. And your reaper cliff here, we actually see it light up. So we might be fine with one pass. Or in terms of light. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think we are. I don't yeah. think we need to go back anymore. I agree. This will be a two pass total done. I agree. Again, like a 280 gram prostate in 25 minutes. I mean, how can you, you can't compete with that. No technology modality can. Hole up can't. Simple prostate, you know, simple right. open, a simple robotic, uh, turf, obviously. green light. I mean, this is as, as yeah. efficient as you can get with your time. I want to put that on a slide. Is that, all right, the eventual uh, upgrades here going to be changing the length of capacity for you guys? Like beyond the six centimeter? I, I I don't we don't know I I, I don't I don't if, think if, but if it does though it would change the step of hardware you would need right like you would need a theoretically yeah. I mean to be honest like how it's set up fits ninety five percent yeah you want, there's not a need for it 
they, they asked, you know, are they going to come out with different versions that are longer right. sizes that, that, that are better for men with, you know, increased length for their prostate. And it's really, in my opinion, not needed. It's, it's rare that we do multiple passes. What do you think, Devin? Yeah, I would say, you know, staging is probably the best, you know, in terms of utilizing that seven centimeters. And uh, we haven't really gotten to the situation where we've had to do that too much. I think I've done it like just a couple times. Sure, maybe like five, four or five. Yeah, yeah. not too much. So it looks really good. I mean, the tissue is reacting well. I mean, I'll show, I'll show you some more visual cues as we go. Um, you can see we're all just staring at the ultrasound. And uh, it paused there for a minute. Is that because you changed the angle? Yeah. He went from right to left. Correct. So it went to right apical side now during that Viru zone. Yeah. And then it came all the way back to urethral cliff external sphincter. And then we went forward into the into the fossa, and then now we're hitting right apical side. So even though it's like 0 to 180, it's only doing half of one side. Right, 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 right. Yeah. But I didn't notice the pause until you guys made it up. But is there a way to see the view of the whole 150, 270 kind of thing? You'll see that in your angle planning. Correct. Like you can see continuously. These big ones don't contract as much. But it did, it a little did, bit. Yeah, bladder yeah. neck shifted, so we can move maybe four and five, or four and three over. Yeah. And I'd, I'd still bring it low, since we know we had more tissue underneath in that transverse yeah. view. So you keep it same. You can see that, that the lowest we'll go is this line here. So we're not gonna, we got room to work with. Where would you say bladder neck? Yeah, it looks like maybe yeah. right in this yeah, region. Right and then up to the right, yeah, just to be a little bit more conservative. This would be safe, yeah. Perfect. And then one can go closer to, to two. I would and, say there, maybe. And then we could bring all this in. What do you think? Yeah, we'll come right to that here. That first pass shortens the process. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, it contracts. And then uh, let's just raise up our initial depth mark just to be a little conservative. Perfect. I like it. Yeah. And to be honest, it, it, yeah, it gets a little intimidating. The keyboard, there's a lot of buttons and stuff on it, but I'm only pushing one button. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> As most devices are. Is there any, any reason in, the, in this technique that you never have to abort or fix the mouth after sort of sound like that? Uh, you, know, you can always, I just, there's the foot pedal, so you can always just. Yeah, yeah, the question is, do you have to board ever? If I'm nervous, I can just take my foot off the pedal and it stops. And then there's an aspirate button as well. So if I'm worried about the bladder, I can I can just push that button and it'll aspirate from the tip of the, the handpiece. Yeah, hit, uh, hit minus here. And the reason why I said that is just because you could see that where the jet was penetrating a little deeper than our green contour. He's the only variable that we have in this in this step is tissue density. So you can see that it's still a little bit under, and as we get into the fossa, we'll hit plus just to level out with our contour. Correct. Yeah, I'm hitting this plus and minus button to come up and down. And then once you get right on it, it'll lock. See now how we're back tracking. Yeah, yeah. See that, right. that green. Yeah. But you were nervous that you were getting too much. Correct. Let me just back off. And it just it looks awesome. You can see here's my, my water jet and it's 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 going right here, right where we predicted it would go, and this tissue is just being obliterated. It's coming down nice and easy. We're at ninety five percent pump level, two minutes and a half left, and then we're done. I mean this is just gorgeous. I predict we're going to have some tissue here. We're going to go back in and scope. But this whole middle aspect of the prostate is just wide open. Is the uh, AI for the software planning, uh, that, it's like 150, 270, and then something else, right? Uh, depending upon your the angle that you set. So say if you have a median lobe, yeah. then you can set that you know maximum to 225. And then the bladder neck will taper to 120 degrees. 120 depending upon your angle. Sometimes if we go smaller in the fossa, then that bladder neck angle will taper down to 105 degrees. Um, but you can set that, you know, your and, and meeting. And what I'm getting at is how, how much do we jump in the details where mm. 
This prostate really opens up. It's a ton of tissue. Let's just go 270, you know, starting at 0.2 in the whole I mean, did you ever do that? Or? I think it's more so, you know, whenever you're in the, in the, in the, Transverse view. You can see this apical as as tissue here. Within, it's still more dense. Everything here looks wide open. You just want to maximize. Um, that, so is the AI trying to maximize, or is it really relying on it, you? What, whatever that angle that you set, you personally set, is what it will stay at. It won't auto auto adjust. You can't. The only thing that it will auto adjust to see it, is the bladder yeah. neck, depending upon what you set in your fossa. And like how when you do the sound of light, you have, you have you have the different views. And the question is, can you switch the views in ultrasound? And uh, you can't. At, at this is where you're, you know, yeah. you're treating. Correct. This is really what you want to see, though. You want to know you're not because going they, too you deep. Know, the theory is if you're you know, having you an wanna, aggressive angle through the sagittal mid prostate view is, or, or median lobe, you want to taper it down a little bit more so at bladder neck. Bladder neck. I see Correct. You're actually starting wide in the bladder, then tapering, then going back to wide. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's going to go back. That's going to be the left apex. And then you have you the ability the right to hit apex. plus or minus. You could shorten or widen right. the right. angle of bladder neck. At that phase too, so pretty clear too. The bigger ones, kind of, you know, if I get scared, I get scared. I, I mean, I don't really, I'm not nervous doing these cases, but yeah. I pause a little bit with the bigger glands because they can bleed more. And you know, once you get in the two to three hundreds, you definitely want to take it serious and, and spend more time when you go back into the turp set. Uh, so you'll you'll kind of see that process. All right, we got the trip set ready. Let's bring this whole table closer to me. All right. Okay. Good there. Yeah. Complete. Perfect. And then the one key here is I got to advance everything back to the top of the handpiece like that. We'll take this off. We'll look in. Yeah, awesome channel. Yeah, beautiful channel. All right, so a little bloody, but we're going in nice and slow. Dropping it. Yeah, a visual in here. And I'm kind of going by fill too and looking at the ultrasound. I'm in the bladder here. Now I am going to train that. Get the uh, base. A little less smooth, but not not terrible. Cool. All right, get that back on, and then get this guy up here. And I guess good form here would be to uh, irrigate. We'll do that here. I'm just going to hook everything up. Just see how things look. It's really not that bad. I don't have a lot of clots. Not, not Nothing's really pumping. Cool. We'll, we'll irrigate it here just real quick. There's some clots coming out already. Yeah. Really nothing. I think the key is to get in here before there's clots, before they can form. All right, let's see here. So bladder looks good. This is all this fluffy tissue. So let's take some of this fluffy tissue down. We focus. There we go. Looks good. Okay. Yeah. We're really just going to open this up a little bit more so we can see everything. What do I got stuck on here? Looks good. And this is, this is the uh, technique. I have a bipolar instrument here. And a lot of the older guys that I work with, when I go to all these aquabation meetings, use monopolar. And I can see, I can see why. Probably a little more hemostatic. I just never did in practice. So a lot of tissue still left here. So you'll, 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 you'll encounter, this is a humongous prostate. Right. I think it's a nice channel, but. You can see on the ultrasound, there's anterior 
Yeah. But I'm going to open this up just a little bit more, just so that I can see if there's any bleeders. That looks good there. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, look at this, the Eurolift in play right there. That's a surprise. Who put a Eurolift in this guy? Yeah, I know. That's, that's, a, that's ambitious. That is oh, oh, I know. Okay, I forgot to tell you that story. So he, ha he saw another local urologist who was learning Eurolift. And did you, I don't think he did ultrasounds on patients. I think he, is, yeah, he had to get those he five Eurolifts on in a month and got pressure to this one. <laughs> yeah. So we'll try to knock those out. No, yep. well, I remember now. Sorry. I, I don't know. I, I, I love You've got to watch out for obturator reflex with this, with the Eurolift implants. Yeah. Yeah, I've been at that bladder next going to town sometimes. <laughs> Can I see if he tried to pin back the median lobe? He did. Or maybe that's from above and fell down. I just recorded a video for Boston Scientific on uh, how to take out your lift implants of green light. Oh, nice. And it's, we see, I see so many of these kind of patients that were mistreated, I think, with a year lift. Yeah. Before, we have 25 centers of excellence around me for your lift. <laughs> and it's like anybody who's anybody as a center, as a BPH expert, and they all get these crazy, uh, like this, this guy should not have had a, it's not an indicator. Yeah, it's a COE designation. Yeah. This is really just a volume thing. This was done by a COE. I won't name names. So I'll have to spend a little more time just because of the year list, but. Question from the audience about resisting yep. the urge to turf the fluffy tissue. Oh yeah, so the question is about the fluffy tissue. Everybody just wants to go at it. I'm gonna kind of go at it a little bit more than normally just because uh, he's had these Eurolifts. And I, want, I don't want any free hanging stuff. So how would you take this up? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna use cut here, cut the string and just push that in and we'll irrigate out of the ulic. And then how often do you, how much time do you spend? Uh, I, the last case I spent, what, five minutes on this part? Yeah. Um, so yeah, usually anywhere from five to 10 minutes. Uh, when you're first starting out, spend as much time as you want. Really take your time. My uh, other guys in my practice that have onboarded this technology will spend like 30 minutes sometimes. Can't overdo it. Yeah, I'd imagine you guys are using it as a debulking step sometimes. Yeah. Then who, out off the wedge and then doing a real turf and then just getting comfortable with it. You know. Yeah, I would counter some of the younger guys where you're really trying to spare ejaculation. I wouldn't do a full turf. Right. You know, I'd be very cautious on those patients. And sometimes I don't do any turf. And I, I, you know, or any focal, you know, I'll go in there, it looks dry, and it's like a 40 gram prostate and I'm done. Um, this is a huge prostate and the potential of, of bleeding is real. And, you know, I'm just taking my time and I'm not rushed. I have no agenda. Um, is your, uh, I think you kind of hit that earlier, but your the post op experience of patients in regards to the dysuria and months. At least not worse than term or similar. Uh, Correct. I think it's better than a term. Maybe even yeah. better. Yourself. Yeah, I think it's better than a term. Yeah, gotcha. So post-op recovery, you know, yeah. dysuria, urgency, I frequency. And then from the audience, question was, uh, how long has this taken so far? So we had trust insertion at 250, and it's now 315, so. How far? How old is that then? What's the math? Not bad. 25 minutes so far. Yeah, 25 minutes in, and I'll be done here. How much is the last take? 280. 280 grams. Oh. It's been 25 just minutes so just far. Just a standard two pass. Nothing real special about it. Correct. Yes. Tissue was more dense. Maybe you would do, you know, three passes if needed, but this was suffice. Do you ever make that decision based on the visual view, or is it just ultrasound for the third? I would say ultrasound. ultrasound. It's when you point out the camera, you can see. Correct. 
This is a fluffy tissue. This is tish this is untreated tissue this up here. Is tissue, yeah. This is kind of that top half of the channel, I think. I'm just trying to find yeah, okay. just trying to find your all the implants. Another question, uh, when will this patient go home? Uh, tomorrow morning. Well, tomorrow morning I'll take the catheter out. And, and what's then, what's standard for me, most of your patients? Right the bladder neck. Yeah, that's uh, like, that's most patients I'm sending home same day. Uh, but if they're like over 125 grams, look at that. I'm just amazed. I'll send them back. About 80% of your yeah, patients. Yeah, I broke the loop. So you're looking for the suture and you're cutting that? Right? Yeah. Yeah, I may need a new, new loop. That's why we're not cutting smoothly here. Do you guys have a thicker loop? I may not need it anymore, but that's ghetto. Another question, can you do aquablation on other failed procedures? Yeah. Like what? Everything, I guess. What, what, to, to your knowledge, what, what have you done? Oh, I've done everything. I mean, this guy just said an aquablation. I've just done resume failures. I've done, uh, we got a lot of green lighters in the area. I'll, I'll see their, their patients. It's humbling when you put an ultrasound in, you see what you really done. Um, you got another loop? Uh, there'd be a thick loop if you got one. Or I'll take whatever you got in your hand. No, I'll, uh, I'll use the lipis one, yeah. So I, I could be just done, but I'm gonna take some of that anterior tissue. It looks like it's falling down. Let's see here. So I'm just uh, thinking out loud, and it seems like, uh, obviously, it'd be kind of interesting if there's a robotic Correct. So I'm running into trouble with the ultrasound. It's kind of bumping in my way. So I'm going to pull the ultrasound out and set it to the side. And then, I, and then I'll have more uh, room with the ultrasound. That's rare that I do that move. It's just a big prostate. I'm kind of. I think this anterior tissue will fall down. See how that falls down? Yeah. What is it? Uh, oh. Uh, you got saline hanging? Yeah. Connections are good. Well, that sucks. Could be the loop? What do you think? Let me just see. Let me just make sure it's in all the way. She's got a different connector there. Maybe you can change power force. That's that shit. Well, we'll do it. Let's change it. It's ruining my times, guys. <laughs> Another question is, uh, what should this patient expect post-op? Uh, post-op. So I'll, I will keep him overnight since he's a massive glands. And if it looks well, I'll take the catheter in the morning and do a voiding trial. And I, most of the time they pee. Sometimes they don't. I put a catheter back in, but I'll give him a couple, you know, four or five hours, and we'll see how he does. Oh, it was the cord. Good job. And then just, you know, two to three, I tell him about two to four weeks of irritable symptoms. And uh, just like a terp. Maybe a little easier than a terp. Yeah, that's better. I wish I could show you an ultrasound what we're doing. But it was getting in the way. Yeah, it's getting in the way. Okay. Just, yeah. and has this been looked at in treating uh, anterior in a very conservative fashion to avoid structures? Like I don't know. I think the old school thought when I was training, they were like, don't touch you know, the don't, anterior yeah, tissue. Don't really bleeds, yeah. Yeah, well, it bleeds. It bleeds. Yeah. And, and it oh, does. Oh, no, I'm still like, so I did four resume procedures this morning in my office. I did multiple green light procedures yesterday. Um, I'm, most of my patients find me for it, or I, I, when I'm working them up, they have a massive glands, and I'm like, 
this would be easier, or I tell them about it. You know, they come in for a Eurolift and, you know, I do an ultrasound, they got a big prostate. I'm like, did you know the durability may be better of this, you know? And, and uh, so I, I think I'm giving, it's in my, uh, this is a huge prostate. It's in my discussion of every patient when I go over options, but I do have a lot of patients that are seeking it out specifically. Um, I did a TV, I was on Fox News with this, and that aired, and a lot of people called in after they saw that piece. But with new technology, it's pretty easy to get on TV, to advertise yourself, to market yourself, and to, to create interest and buzz. Uh, the company does a great job itself. I mean, when you start researching options and this comes up, and you're an engineer, or you know, right. any, you know, you're gonna find this as an option and be like, this is what I want. Starting to open up. Yeah. Again, we're not treating any of this anterior tissue. The, the, the water jet's not going upwards, so this is all virgin tissue. It's like a standard turf. But you're treating it because it could be obstructive, or do you I, still worry about, I, yeah, still worry about your lift uh, clips? Both. I don't know if he put. A, I don't know where this guy put his Eurolift clips, um, <laughs> but they could be anywhere. I'm not finding them up at 12 o'clock usually. I put yeah, mine no, in. No, you no. know, that's a no-no. No. I'm fortunate that I do a lot of Eurolift, so I, I usually know where they are at. But yeah, but when you're out here, they go everywhere. <laughs> this is the wild, wild west. Yeah, I think. I do like this. Uh, look at that channel now. I mean, yeah, look I at think it's a different the nature of the issue you got. Yeah. Pretty dry overall. I mean, you got, I got, I could, I could keep going. Again, I, you know, when we mapped it out, we weren't going all the way. I'm just looking for your lift implants, making sure nothing. And I really probably should scope them in a couple months just to make sure there's no free hanging gear lift implants. I recommend that with, with I get I get nervous with that when I fish them out because like I try to count every single one and it's just like it can never be a conversation. Yeah. It's her afterwards exactly. It's just like I try to keep track of the ones. So how do you cut the suture with the green Oh, I have a video coming out on it. So the question <laughs> is how do you uh, how do you cut a how do you take out your lift green light and all you do is you put a grasper in the laser port and pull it out through the laser port and it's four pounds of pressure and it comes out it comes out really easily you don't have to cut it you just no you just pull yeah that's okay yeah i mean look at that channel isn't that awesome yeah, it is real and I, I there may be implants hanging out i don't see any more No bleed, no, no implants. I think. Yeah. This is where it bleeds. Like. Five o'clock, seven o'clock. Yeah, what do you say? Good. So you got to understand, like, the Water 1 and Water 2 study, they didn't do any of this. They had amazing results. So, you know, you feel like, as a urologist... Remind yourself that, you know, yeah. see how that can be a problem. So you just assume the bleeding is stopping Yeah, they did have traction. Yeah. I think it could be useful study to take a look. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah. Viewers want to know... Or how do you explain this process versus your normal hemostasis process just because this is a bigger gland? Uh, this is the, I do the same thing every time for everybody. I'm spending a lot more time. Um, mainly, I think the, the urolift implants, I'm just nervous that I'm leaving some behind. 
but I, I don't think he they, they even stayed. Like you're not you're not gonna fire to the capsule here. I'm not sure what he was trying to accomplish, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm, I'm taking more. I think it's more serious. Definitely bigger glands, bigger blood vessels. The total time so far has only been 35 minutes. Yeah, we're 35 minutes in. I'm gonna you like a little bit, but we're about done. I mean, that's. I would have just taken the bladder neck by down and, and then sort of turn, but now be working the lateral loops. <laughs> You would leave that. What do you guys think? Survey says. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of tissue here, but. That's insane. Look at that. A little bit of bleeding. I want to get those implants out too. I just don't want to pee those out. Yeah, that's insane. Well, that's good. So we got everything. All the pieces pushed into the bladder, and then I'm gonna you can be done. Have you done any uh, radical prostates after uh, aqua ablation? Not yet. The question is, have I done radical prostates after aqua ablation? Um, and not yet. I think I do a really good job at screening my patients for for prostate cancer. But it should be any different. Correct. I think it'll be less. So in terms of manpower in the room, I know you guys said you but the least manpower you do is just uh, him attack the man's he's on a sit like That's it. That's it. There's a union danger here where we're gonna come in here. Cool. <laughs> and I am gonna go in just of a twenty two three way. Uh, this is just went so well. Thirty-seven minutes total. Yeah, so thirty-seven minutes. This is one of my longer.